Hello everyone and welcome to a very nice game that was played in round 2 of Chess.com's uh, Isle of Man International Tournament. Uh, it's a game between two Indian Grandmasters, Vidit Gujarati and Debashish Das, and I'm sure you're all gonna enjoy it. Uh, it's against the French defense and it's really, really just a wonderful game. And uh, we haven't had uh, a photo challenge in quite some time now, so I did prepare one. Uh, here, uh, the challenge is how many people in this photo can you name? So there you have it. It's a... Uh, it's a photo from Daniel Wrench's uh, Twitter page, so uh, I will put a link to it in the description below as well. Now, all of these people are in some way connected to, to this tournament, either by organizing it, or by uh, commenting on it, or by playing in it, or, or by, you know, uh, photographing. Uh, so, pretty sure you know most of them. And uh, one of them, of course, uh, Maxim Vashir Lagrav. It is his birthday, so this is uh, a, a birthday dinner. So there we have it, best of luck to everyone, now let's check out this very nice game. Uh, Vidit has the white pieces and he opens with e4. Like the title suggests, uh, his opponent uh, uh, responds with e6, we have the French defense, d4, d5, knight to c3, and now capturing on e4, the Rubinstein variation. Knight recaptures, now comes bishop to d7, knight to f3, and now bishop to c6, we have the Fort Knox variation of the Rubinstein. Uh, bishop to d3. Uh, knight to d7 and now Vidit castles. We have knight g to f6 and now although sometimes you want to perhaps develop a, a piece and then also defend your knight that's attacked twice. Uh, but here black would simply get uh, too much out of these exchanges and you don't want to allow something like this as white once you defend the b7 pawn. This knight can come to f6 and uh, all, all is well for black. Uh, so Vidit simply moves the knight back, a nice move with the knight back, bishop to e7 and c4 now. And what I really enjoy about white here uh, is that every move will be a developing move. Uh, thus castles, we have bishop to f4 and now comes b6. Uh, queen to e2, developing the queen, uh, also connecting rooks, preparing, uh, making some room for them so they can enter the game as well, and bishop to b7. Uh, seems like uh, a waste of time this bishop to b7 move, but it's really not. If you continue the game uh, here, uh, white can use the fact that the bishop on c6 is undefended, uh, you know, for, for remaneuvering his pieces here, black would either, ha either have to react to this or waste time uh, now. So by playing bishop to b7 early, you're uh, actually, uh, you know, saving time by wasting time. Uh, and also you'll see what white's plan is, so then you will decide uh, how you want to uh, develop your pieces. Uh, rook a to d1, and now comes rook to e8. Uh, and now bishop to c2, a very nice move that uh, opens up the d file for the rook. Also you're free to create some batteries here with the queen and bishop uh, to threaten perhaps uh, dh7 square. And also uh, wh uh, white has plans to remain over this bishop to a4 to threaten this rook as the knight on d7 will be pinned. Uh, we have queen to c8. Uh, getting the queen out of the d-file, and now also here we have a nice queen-bishop battery that if uh, this uh, opens up for some reason, then could be dangerous for white. Uh, bishop to a4, as we've already mentioned, and now bishop to f8, now the rook is controlling the e-file. <clears throat> we have knight to e5, and now c6. Uh, the knight on d7 is no longer pinned, uh, and now we have rook to d3. A very nice rook lift, as uh, white is definitely planning to bring this bishop back, and with... Uh, the bishop's pair eyeing over the king's side, perhaps this rook will somehow make his way over here. The queen might be able to come to g4 to h5, and uh, white could create uh, perhaps a very nice king's side attack. Uh, here, if you capture, for example, knight captures on e5, d captures, this knight is coming to d7, and now it can be very dangerous for black. This knight is coming to h5, like we said, the, the position on the king's side is no longer defended by black. Queen can come to g4, rook can come to g3, h3, and all of black's pieces are cramped uh, on the queen side, not really uh, doing anything to help out with the defense of the king side. Uh, so after this uh, rook, sorry about that, rook to d3 move, a nice rook lift, a6 first, preparing b5. So rook to c1, now if b5, uh, then uh, this can be played and the, the, the rook uh, uh, will be controlling the c file, which is very nice. Uh, rook to a7, uh, Perhaps the rook will now help out with the defense uh, of the king side here, and also moves like queen to a8 are possible. Uh, we have a3, queen to a8, and now comes knight to e4. Uh, we have uh, b5, uh, bishop to c2, and now comes c5. Uh, now this knight on e4 is attacked three times by the bishop, queen, and the knight, and the white has to react to this. Knight to g5. 
Uh, this comes with a double attack against the f7 pawn, so black uh, doesn't have time to capture on g2 just yet. So first, b captures on c4 with an attack on the rook, and now comes a rook to g3. This comes with defending the g2 pawn, and also black still has a lot of problems here. Still his f7 pawn is under attack, uh, but uh, you have uh, other problems uh, that you have to face. This bishop is still uh, eyeing h7, the queen is still... Uh, uh, <laughs> coming into the play at some point when this knight moves, so uh, black first plays g6, uh, a nice defensive move that opens up the dark square bishop, uh, but it simply doesn't work. Uh, here white played knight captures on h7. And what's the idea? The idea is that uh, all, of, all of white's pieces are attacking the king side, so you definitely have reasons to do this. Uh, knight captures on h7 and now comes bishop captures on g6. Uh, so what do you do here? Uh, if you play f captures on g6, then you get the rook captures on g6. Uh, bishop to g7, now comes rook captures on g7, king captures on g7, and now it's for queen to g4 check. Uh, it's all over. You either go back and then you get knight to f7, which will be checkmate, or you can go perhaps to f8. Uh, but again, bishop to h6 check, king moves, and now queen to g7 check. King moves, and now queen captures on d7 uh, will again be checkmate. So after bishop to g6, uh, does play knight d to f6, bringing another defender into the game, uh, but this simply doesn't work. Uh, white has a beautiful checkmate in 4 here, it's a very nice forced variation. Uh, although white can win in a, in a lot of different ways, there is one that is uh, specifically uh, beautiful, so feel free to pause the video here uh, and try to find that one that forces mate uh, in 4 moves. Uh, so I'll give you a couple of seconds for you to decide whether you want to do it or not. Uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations, you are an excellent uh, sacrificer of the queen. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, uh, you can win, of course, with bishop to f7 captures. Uh, but queen to h5 is what was played in the game. It is the quickest way to victory. And it was in this position that the das uh, decided to resign the game. Uh, why did he resign? Uh, well, uh, first we must ask ourselves the obvious question. What happens if knight captures queen? Well, if knight captures queen, then you get bishop captures on f7 check. It's a double check since the check uh, is delivered uh, from the rook uh, and also from the bishop. So white, black has only one move, king to h8, and now comes bush, uh, rook to g8, and this is now checkmate. Uh, but what happens if the queen is not captured? What happens if you try to, for example, play bishop to g7 and bring another defender into the game? Uh, then the idea is bishop captures on h7, and now it doesn't matter. Uh, you can either move the king to f8, and then you get queen captures on f7 checkmate, or you can go king to h8, uh, and again you will get knight captures on f7, a nice checkmate as the bishop is covering the g8 square. Uh, and also, after queen to h5, you can play something like bishop to e4, perhaps bringing another defender into the game, uh, but here black will face a, a different queen sacrifice, queen captures on h7, a very nice move, forcing black to capture it, uh, knight captures on h7, and now again you get bishop captures on f7, this comes with a double check, king has to move, and now again rook to g8 will be checkmate. So hopefully after knight d to f6, you all found queen to h5, and now you feel very good about yourself as you are an excellent queen sacrificer. So yeah, uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, uh, it's, a, it's a really wonderful 25-move game, a nice miniature. And of course, in today's, uh, today's world where you know pretty much everything is, is engine lines and uh, a lot of games are drawn, uh, seeing a nice game like this uh, really, really makes you happy that someone uh, decided to play the French uh, against a plus 2700 player. So yeah, uh, I'd like to thank uh, uh, Thomas Perry, William uh, William Rideout, uh, Eric Label, uh, Mark Gamble, and uh, James uh, Crenshaw for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you soon, uh, perhaps with another game from Iom Chess, or uh, perhaps even continuing the Bobby Fischer series uh, with Game 16, Fischer vs. Pasky. Uh, thank you all, and uh, I'll see you soon.